challenge. Apple has plunged far more than anybody else. And of course, the CEO, Tim Cook, is looking for a way to try to encourage people to uh, update their phones, to stay with Apple. And so he's pushing encryption. He's pushing privacy. I'm glad that he's doing it, but he's getting a pushback from the government. Nevertheless, we see that uh, the Apple CEO apparently lashed out at the Obama administration officials for not issuing a public statement defending the use of encryption without backdoors, according to two people who were briefed on the meeting and relayed the information to The Intercept. And we look at this, look at the background of what's going on with encryption, with privacy. Just this week, we've had Ross Ulbrich, the guy who was convicted as being a uh, uh, the dread pirate Roberts. They're appealing for a new trial, talking about how the prosecutors had uh, suppressed information about corrupt federal agents. We've seen that researchers at Kapersky Lab have found a valuable zero-day exploit attacking a vulnerability in Microsoft's Silver Silverlight software, and a researcher found a way for hackers to remotely burn industrial motors. All this reported by Wired Magazine. And yet, we're supposed to turn over one of the potentially most dangerous things that we have in our life, and that is this vehicle that we're driving along at 60 miles an hour, we're supposed to turn control of that over to Silicon Valley, the people who cannot and or will not uh, control the phones, who give the government back doors in terms of monitoring and tracking everything we do. Meanwhile, the FBI, who is trying to track everybody in all, all of this, so is saying that they cannot hire enough programmers if they have to maintain the uh, marijuana testing that they're doing on people. They say they can't find people who are any good at uh, security, at cybernet security, who aren't pot smokers. The FBI director says, I have to hire a great workforce to compete with those cyber criminals. Some of those kids want to smoke weed on the way to the interview. Now, when Motherboard reports this, they're essentially talking about how out of step our drug war is with society's values. But the reality is, is that it's out of step with the Constitution. The reality is, is that these schedules, like making marijuana a Schedule One drug, that was something that was created by the UN. It's a UN agenda, and that's something for conservatives to think about. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk about Marco Rubio's flexibility on immigration, as well as his flexibility on eligibility for presidents. We'll be right back. All you ISIS people threatening us, hey, we're not a French newspaper, okay? We got people that have taken your asses out in this building right now. We're armed to the teeth, and we're not scared. You got that, you sons of bitches? This is Texas. You want to threaten me, you can go straight to hell. You understand that? Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Another GOP debate is upon us. When you had the World Trade Center go, people were put into planes that were friends, family, and they were sent back. They knew what was going on. They went home and they wanted to watch their boyfriends on television. Who else would come back like that at the Bushes and the Clintons calling them criminals? And this the Saudis. Guys, go back to your live feeds. You see, we don't have rights in America. Only the people who are outside of this country have a right. The only right that anybody has is to come live in America, presumably to live off of us if that's what they choose. They can come live off of us. They can come uh, create war in our country. That's their right. But people in America don't have rights. The first and most important priority of the President of the United States is to protect the safety and security of America. No, it isn't. You're disqualified. You have an oath to the Constitution, and the oath to the Constitution says, and the Declaration of Independence says, you are created to protect our freedoms. Right. Not to keep us safe. They didn't want safety. They wouldn't have rebelled against the strongest government in the world if their first priority was safety. Their first priority was liberty. They created a government to protect that. I'm sick of these people. If we want to defend the country, we have to defend against who's are coming in. And Marco is, has more of an allegiance to Chuck Schumer and to the liberals than he does to conservative policy. Do you really think that Republicans have fueled the rise of ISIS? <laughs> Uh, I think yeah, that's where's she been? Who is she? The allies of <laughs> ISIS, the Islamic what rebels against doing? Assad, uh, that we created a safe space bimbo? or made that space bigger for <laughs> ISIS to grow. Uh, we know what's going on. We know these guys are running ISIS. And when they talk about shutting down freedom of speech, he just repeated 
the exact same stuff he said in his speech, even talking about how you don't refer to these people as masterminds, he knows precisely what he's saying. These are a bunch of Morlocks, and the American people are a bunch of Eloy. When they talk about serving America, you're on the menu. Join InfoWars January 14th, starting at 7 p.m. Central for another episode of Political Science Theater 3K. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. This weekend on Sunday's Meet the Press, presidential candidate Marco Rubio showed how fluid he can be on immigration. And of course, uh, when we talk about Marco Rubio, I would say that he is our anchor baby candidate. We need to understand what natural born citizen means. But let's put that aside for a moment and look what he proposes for people who are here illegally. He said that felons should not be allowed to stay but those who commit lesser crimes should still qualify for citizenship. And he didn't specify if the people allowed to stay would ever be able to become citizens. But at what point, I guess we need to ask him, maybe if we could get this definition from him, at what point does an illegal, a person here illegally, become a criminal? I mean, what laws and how many do they need to break uh, before they become a criminal alien, as he points out. He says, if you're a criminal alien, no, you can't stay. But if you're someone who's been here for a very long time, you know, he'll take a look at it, okay? And so they point out that this is his fluid position on immigration. Of course, he was part of the Gang of Eight that tried to uh, do blanket amnesty to people who were here illegally, not following the legal process for immigration. And I guess we should also ask if he and Ted Cruz are following the legal process for presidential eligibility. A lot of people responded to the report that I had on the uh, radio on Friday when I was talking about Ted Cruz not being a natural born citizen, in my opinion. A lot of people said, oh, of course he's a citizen. You have to understand what we're talking about here is how he became a citizen not a naturalized citizen. A naturalized citizen is not the same as a natural born citizen. And of course, it is an arbitrary distinction to some degree. You could say that about anything that's in the law. We have requirements for age. Let's pick the age of 35 for president. Why not 34? Why not 36? The understanding there is that the person had to have a certain amount of maturity. We arbitrarily picked an age and set it at that. Now, if you want people at a younger age, if you want people at 18 to be able to become president, then try to change the Constitution. But the law says what the law says. And if Ted Cruz says he's going to be a constitutionalist, if he says he's going to appoint Supreme Court judges who are originalists, then he owes an explanation to us as to why he is qualified to be president. Now, 
On other immigration, uh, we see that after Paul Ryan, and this is part of the omnibus bill reported by uh, Breitbart, they say after he funds visas for 300,000 Muslim migrants, House Republicans give him a standing ovation. This was, uh, of course, a follow-up to last month's omnibus bill. They point out that with 1.1 trillion omnibus uh, spending bill, it funded visas for nearly 300,000 temporary and permanent Muslim migrants over just the next year. It also funded sanctuary cities, illegal alien tax credits. It changed federal law to allow for massive increases in low-skilled H-2B workers. Now, you know, I said uh, maybe we ought to have an H-1B visa president since we don't really care anymore about the qualifications that are in the Constitution. I'm sure we could find people outside the country that have better qualifications than the people who are running right now. Maybe it's not H-1B visa, that's uh, too technical. We should use uh, the H-2B visa because it's an unskilled position, apparently. Uh, nevertheless, after all this was happening, they have a, a conference and they had Republicans give Ryan a standing ovation. Now, you might say, well, of course they would do that. They would always do that. And that hasn't happened in the past. They say, for the past four years, lawmakers have used this as an occasion to scream at John Boehner and at Eric Cantor, but no screaming against Paul Ryan this time. No, in spite of what he did, they were applauding him. And I can only guess that when they say the House Republicans were happy for once, as Politico pointed out, I can only guess that they're happy about the fact that he did the head fake for Obamacare, for Planned Parenthood, finally passing a resolution saying that they don't like those just three weeks after they fully funded them. Three weeks after they gave up all their leverage to try to not fund Obamacare and Planned Parenthood. And of course, they're not even paying attention to the fact that they immediately, within less than a week, funded the climate treaty that Obama said he was going to sign us on to. Now, this last weekend, we also had the Democrat debate, uh, which they cleverly put up against the uh, playoffs on Sunday. And it basically featured a back and forth between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. And let me just kind of break this down for you, okay? We've known what these two are. As they say, we've already established what they are. We're just haggling over the price. The price it's going to cost us, and not only the economy, but the price in our liberty. And the difference between the two of them essentially came down to a difference, a, a slight difference on gun control and nationalized health care. Now, Sanders wants to take an incremental approach to gun control, gradually take away our gun rights. Hillary wants to go for them all at once. But when you look at health care, uh, she wants to go with a gradual approach because she tried that once before coming after everything. Remember back in 1993, we had Hillary Care. She tried for a single payer system. In other words, government controlling and running everything and people revolted against that. So she understands that if we're going to try to do a kind of Sandinista healthcare system, that's not going to fly. But Bernie Sanders didn't learn anything in the last three years about the failure of socialism or the failure to sell socialism. So he is pushing for a full out uh, uh, healthcare system that uh, she has come back and taken the tactic of Margaret Thatcher, essentially saying, how are we going to be able to afford this? You know, Margaret Thatcher said, the problem with socialism is you eventually run out of other people's money. And that's what Hillary Clinton is saying. Now, when it comes to gun control, Mr. Sanders, they, they point out, pointed to other restrictions that he supported and said his vote for the immunity legislation, and that is to say that uh, when they talk about immunity, they're not really talking about immunity for gun manufacturers. Understand that nobody who manufactures a gun or who manufactures a car has any liability or should have any liability if somebody uses that in a crime. And what they're trying to do is hold gun manufacturers liable for crimes, for criminal use of their product. If somebody were to take an automobile, for example, and use it as a car bomb, should people be able to sue Ford? What if they drive their Chevy through a crowd in a terrorist uh, action, as we've seen happen multiple times already in the United States? Should they be able to sue Chevy for that? But what they're saying is Smith & Wesson should be sued if somebody uses a gun to commit a crime. Now, the liberals will say, but gr guns are only created to kill people. No, guns are set up to either provide safety for people, to defend people, or they can be used in an act of criminal aggression. But now what they're saying is that if you don't allow the uh, people to sue gun manufacturers when their uh, products are used criminally, 
then that is giving them immunity. Do you see how the liberals like to play with language? Do you see how they twist the language to, uh, to, to win the debate? So Sanders points to other restrictions he supported, says his, voice, his vote for immunity legislation was meant to protect, quote, a small mom and pop gun shop, 